Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a Syndicate Talks. I am your host, Ashley McCartney, and welcome. We are so glad to have you today, those of us that are in studio with us and those of you that will be watching this recording later. A Syndicate Talks formed at the beginning of the pandemic, bringing accessible business education to our members as well as the general public. The idea behind a Syndicate Talks is to put the best of business practices, ideas, and designs at the forefront and give people free information so that they can better their businesses and continue to thrive and grow. Business education should never be as challenging as it's been right now or for the last 18 months for any business owner to find. And so we are really proud here at Syndicate that we can bring that information to you on the regular as well as free of charge. And for those individuals that are Syndicate members, um, they are open to join us in studio today and uh, ask questions and share some insight. So today, I would love to chat about today's event, A Syndicate Talks, now in Season 3. Um, and we're giving the best of our members all the education that we can and broadcasting it to the world. So today, our guest speaker is Tarsi Shindelka. Um, pardon me on the name there, Tarsi, but I'm glad I got it right. And Tarsi is the Chief Entertainment Officer for Advanced Entertainment. Tarsi is going to be talking to us about everything entertainment as we approach the holiday season, as well as now that in-person events are opening up within the restriction guidelines. And I know, Tarsi, that's going to be a chat of ours today in terms of the, you know, pandemic and all the struggles that you've experienced over the last 18 months. But one thing that I've really noticed with you is your innate ability to pivot and to be creative and to work with any business, regardless of the restrictions, and still give them a, an amazing entertainment experience, whether it's your casinos or your video poker or your music poker, um, as well as a number of other things that you've done, uh, but I don't want to steal your spotlight. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Tarsi, um, and he will have the floor for the next little while. Tarsi. Thanks, Ashley. Appreciate it. So just to kind of continue on my history, I started this company back in 2007. Um, we had some uh, 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 land come into our possession that we ended up selling. And so we took $50,000 and started a business. It was a uh, part-time thing as we started. Uh, it was just kind of a sideline, something I wanted to do again after being in radio for years and years and moving all over the place. And uh, it started out as just a DJ company, and it ended up becoming a full-time thing for me in 2011. So we're just at 10 years and almost 11 coming up here right away uh, come January 1st. After 2010, which was until recently the worst year of my life, uh, <laughs> so it just kind of worked out that, hey, we're just going to take this business full-time. So I held my nose, jumped in with both feet, and here we are now. Uh, through a whole lot of adventures uh, later too. So that's kind of uh, where the company came from and how it's grown. We started out, like I said, as just a DJ company and have grown into many other facets as well over the years. So um, today I wanted to talk about kind of the past, the present and the future of entertainment and not just entertainment, but also events. Um, they're not the exact same thing, they're close. They're obviously related in one way or another, but until recently, really um, having an event was what you could call easy. Uh, you find your space, you find your food, you find your entertainment, you make an agenda, go. <laughs> obviously there's a lot more detail that goes in behind that, but that's your basic breakdown of how an event comes together. As event professionals, it was easy on our side as well. Basically, we just had to help the client determine their direction, what they wanted to do at their event, um, figure out the appropriate equipment or services that were needed for to make that happen, and then execute and help them achieve the goals that they set out for that event one way or the other. Um, so like I say, I'm simplifying it. There's much more to it. That's where the air quotes come from. The title is because it's not just entertainment that's affected. It's all events all the way from meetings of five to 10 to 15 people to the Christmas parties that we'll talk about, uh, weddings and funerals and even conventions. And I mean, a perfect example of that is looking at what Tony Robbins did because uh, typically he'll go speak in front of a few thousand people, but uh, during the lockdown, he had to pivot himself 
and uh, figure out a way that he could still interact and be a part of people's lives. And if anybody's ever seen Tony live, A, it's amazing. B, you walk out so energized and he was able to put that together and do it on a platform. I think it actually was Zoom. I'm not gonna say like Zoom because I'm pretty sure it was Zoom. So he had thousands of people that were there with him and he could see every single one of them and it was like looking out at a sea of seats, but it was on a screen projected for him to be able to be in the round and interacted with everybody as well. So essentially, I had built what I call a recession proof business. And maybe not proof, but recession resistant might be the better way, because if I think back and I was as I was writing up this presentation that, you know, there's there's always going to be meetings one way or another. People have to meet and discuss where their companies are going or, or where their plans are going, that sort of thing. People are always going to get married, so there's always going to be weddings. And this is where the resistant comes in. There's almost always parties of some sort. And I say almost because back in 2008, if we remember the bubble bursting in the U.S. and how Canada uh, kind of followed suit, as it does when the economy likes to crash, um, we saw a little bit of a dip in our corporate parties that year, simply because it was oil, it was the service companies that went alongside it. 2015, the same thing. Uh, after governments changed here in Canada, uh, oil prices fell out of the bottom and uh, basically we saw a number of companies drop off there. That doesn't mean that we lost a ton of money. We didn't because we came out aside from losing certain clients pretty much unscathed. And actually we ended up going into other areas and being able to grow through these recessions as well. So uh, people basically want a variety of service offerings for their events. They don't want to do the exact same thing year after year is basically how it is. Um, so the needs and wants also vary throughout the year, depending on what time of year it is, depends on what we are usually busiest with. And of course, I gotta, I, I have to refer to a normal year, which we haven't had in a little while. But so I'm going to be talking on that. And then we'll get to the COVID stuff and all that in a little bit. So basically, uh, we're coming up to November and December. Uh, that's typically heavy company party season. And there, there's the odd um, school dance salted in there, which aren't happening right now. Uh, there's the odd wedding that uh, gets tossed in there as well. But for the most part, through November and December, it's all company parties as people try to celebrate the holidays. In January, February, March, it, it, it switches over to the meetings industry and people planning for the year, that sort of thing. Uh, lots of get togethers. That's where conventions typically happen as well, simply because in January, February, and March, in everybody's lives, particularly here in Canada, when we have winter for those three months and the dead of winter at that point, I don't like to think about it, but um, basically they need something to fill the space and, and to keep people engaged through some of the toughest months out there. So that's where the meetings and conventions start to come in. April through September is essentially what we would have as our wedding season, October can be a slower month but with halloween and that sort of stuff there's still the events that come up with halloween parties or engagement with uh with employees as well so we've needed to be versatile for a while uh, and able to shift gears very very quickly so just a quick note people ask you know and it's not everybody but i hear it from people uh, typically it's a layman saying why do people like you in your industry cost so much? Well, because when you're at a convention or if you're at a party or whatever the case may be, you typically don't see what goes on. And that is by complete design. There is hours and hours of work that go into a successful event. So on top of that, we have to bring out thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment to make it happen as well. Plus there's all the labor, the preparation that has to go into it, if we happen to be emceeing or whatever the case may be, there is a lot of work that goes into it. And that is right from uh, a meeting and setting up and testing projectors and, and, and laptops and that kind of stuff or microphones and making sure uh, that everybody's good to go. So a lot of times we are the first to get there as event professionals and the last ones to leave. So people will show up at a party, a wedding, whatever the case may be, and they'll just see the event happen. 
and we are there. Let's just say I was DJing a wedding for a perfect example. I'm the guy that's there turning the microphone on and pushing buttons, making music happen, right? That's the basic rundown of what people see in an event like that. But I had sat down with the bride and groom a couple of times. I've taken phone calls from them. I've prepped exactly the music that they want for the special parts of, of their evening as well. And if I'm doing their ceremony, everything that goes along there, I need to get the names of all the other professionals that are taking part. So, right? so it just comes down to all these things that people don't see happen. And that's why that uh, our fees would be what could be considered a lot uh, to some people. So that's essentially a breakdown of how it was. Now, what happened? I think we all know. <laughs> we all know exactly what happened. I built a recession-proof business, but COVID turned the world on its ear. COVID said to the recession, here, hold my beer and watch this. I'm going to shut everything down and let's see how it goes. So everything, and I mean everything in our industry canceled. And we're in a number of different spots. We're in bars and restaurants. We are in the small events and we're in the big events. And literally everything stopped. 100% shutdown, something that not a lot of people could handle. But since that first lockdown last March, um, it's also been a revolving door of what's allowed, what isn't, what we can do, what we can't, where we can do it, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Sometimes, like we did have a wedding last summer after that first lockout, but it was outside and it was in a tent outside kind of thing too. So there's, you've got to be able to be very fluid in a situation like this. And I think that goes with, with any business. If something um, comes up and I mean, we could go back to the early two thousands and SARS and out in Toronto, they were having, I mean, that one, we got lucky with it. It basically stayed in Toronto, um, but their industries were turned on their ear for a little while as well. So really, if you can learn to be uh, fluid, flexible, and uh, creative, uh, you're going to be able to get through some things like this. Um, events in general in Canada is a $2.6 billion industry. A lot of people don't think, don't know how big events actually are. And that was an industry that was completely stopped. Last October, it actually just came up in my Facebook memories uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, event professionals got together and had a red alert day is basically what it was. So we all turned our, our Facebook um, Facebook profile pictures red. Um, if you're a Facebook friend of mine, you would have seen that I took some of the up lights, like what's lighting the curtain behind me here, and turned them all red and lit my house up full red that night as well and kept it that way. So basically the whole point of that was just to, and, and lots of guys that I know uh, ended up doing that as well. So the whole point of that was just basically to bring awareness to that events industry. And that's why, again, I went with the title of entertainment and events, because if you think about the events industry, like think about the thousands and thousands of people that work to make things happen. Um, if you're at a hotel, think of those servers that are bringing your food out to you or setting the buffet. Uh, think about the chefs that have to cook the buffet or the plates and, and make them look beautiful. Um, think about the venue staff, the people that have to set up the tables, the chairs, uh, that sort of thing. Think about vendors like us uh, and other production companies who are larger and actually focus solely on production. And then there's the people that you see that do work for me. Yeah, my card dealers in our casinos, uh, our DJs and our hosts in our music poker games in the bars as well. So people that survived, I mean, COVID has shut down a bunch of companies. Uh, I've heard uh, a number just in, in my direct industry that are gone. Those that survived uh, essentially either had reserves and were able to cut their costs wherever possible and fight their way through the government subsidies helped a little bit, very, very little bit, um, but a little bit nonetheless. Uh, some of them, uh, basically, it's not their full-time job either. Um, so they have another full-time job that they can finance through or their spouse helped them up uh, all the way through. Um, a guy I know just did an interview with a local media company 
And uh, that media company focused solely on the wedding industry. And I think part of the reason for that is because when weddings cancel or when weddings are affected, it tugs at the heartstrings as well, because here's this bride and groom. Actually, I've got a bride and groom as a perfect example that have had to postpone their wedding three times now. So now we're moving into next summer. We were supposed to do it last month, but then of course, then we got two weeks before I, we had talked, we were ready to go. And so that tugs at the heartstrings and that sucks for them. But again, it comes down to that being fluid and being flexible with people. Um, you could take their deposit, just say, nope, forget it because it's in the contract. You guys are out that money, but that's not the kind of guy that I am uh, when it comes to doing business. I want to be that person that they say, hey, this guy worked with us the entire way through and helped us through some very difficult times. That was a garden path that I walked down. But I mean, basically, the whole point is the, the media focused on the weddings part. But what about the rest of it? What about what about all the other events? What about the convention centers that typically bring in thousands and thousands of visitors to Edmonton every single year. The economic spin-offs of events are huge. And I mean, one event that we are able to have now, uh, not us particularly, but the Oilers are able to have fans in their building again, right? So you're going to get people traveling from out of town who are spending that money in their hotels and food and all that kind of stuff. So restaurants see a bump and you got to think about the fallout that comes alongside that too. And it's not just the weddings, it's all of the events that go on out there. And again, right down to those 10 or 15 person meetings, you're still talking about servers, putting water and coffee into a room and everything that goes along with it. So I just want to really be, um, I guess a little bit hardcore on that and, and make sure that people are paying attention that it's an entire events industry. Um, but basically, like I said, we've had to be nimble uh, and use everyone's favorite word. And you mentioned it already, Ashley, earlier, that's pivot. You know, I, I said, I wasn't going to say that word anymore after a few months, but here I am using it again. So how did we do that? Well, basically, after a few weeks of the lockdown, um, we took one of our games and Ashley, you mentioned that one as well. That's music poker. Uh, we took it out of the bars because they were closed anyway and brought it online and it simply became it was the reason we did it was because we were bored <laughs> i was bored out of my skull i couldn't like i mean legitimately couldn't do anything i laid there on the couch looking at the ceiling so much i was like okay i just i don't know anymore i, I you know it, after working my tail off for so long, uh, I enjoyed the rest, but it got a little harsh after a little while. So it became a bit of boredom. Uh, and on top of that, I mean, we were thinking about, okay, well, if I'm this bored, how about the people that come out and play this game? And we have, I mean, we have a bunch of locations in Alberta, but beyond that, the guy who wrote the program and owns the rights to the program that I lease it from, he leases it to other people. There's locations out in other provinces. And so we had a lot of regulars that we had to think about. So basically we put it online and that was very much a learning experience because the first time we did it, we did it on Facebook. And that became a major point of contention with Facebook because as we all know, they do not like to have rights music on their platform. So we were halfway through our first night and got muted. <laughs> it's tough to play a game called music poker when you can't hear a damn thing. So uh, we figured that one out. And then we discovered Zoom along with everybody else. I think at about the same time, Zoom has revolutionized uh, everything when it comes to meetings and conventions and the way things are going to go from this point forward. I think the way we used to do it um, is still going to happen, but less so, particularly when, um, like an early morning meeting, if somebody wants to have a meeting and not have to wear pants yet, or not able to wear pants yet, then Zoom is the way to do it. And I'm wearing pants, just so you guys are aware. Just, I don't want to freak you out, but yes, they're on. But um, so essentially, Zoom's completely revolutionized where we're going with things and technology like this, because other platforms have sprung up 
Um, it takes a little while to, to figure out the nuances and the ins and outs of how they work and how you can make what you're doing work. But because we've been doing it now constantly since last year, basically we know exactly what we can and can't do for people. So we grew from that into full online offerings. And actually you've seen some of this stuff as well um, because we ended up getting locked down again, uh, again and again. <laughs> and again. Um, a lot of questions were being asked. We still can't gather. So what can we do? How do we do this? This has been a tough year on our employees. How can we show our appreciation for them? These are the questions we heard. Um, another one uh, is we're a culture-based company. And actually, you'll, you'll, this will be close to your heart. We're a culture-based company, particularly to increase our employee retention. We want them to enjoy being here. But how can we do that right now when everybody's working from home, sitting on their computers, gaining COVID weight? So we all know that in order to make money in business, the best way to do that is to solve somebody's problem. So that's where the full offerings started to come in. We grew it uh, from basically just that music poker once a week, one night. And by the way, on that, we also started to kind of evolve that as it exploded as well. We ended up having 200 people playing every single week, basically. Um, our max is 250 because that's how many cards we have in each category. But uh, so 250 people or 200 people basically would log on and play this game and forget all the crap that was going on around them for a couple of hours and just listen to the music. Uh, bring up the memories that that music provides and able to just kind of forget everything. It really um, became a, a big thing for people. And so with that, we were able to go to our locations, be it in BC or Alberta or wherever. Uh, and we said, Hey guys, like, I know you're shut down right now. I totally understand that. So we're not doing any of this, but what we are doing is we put music poker online. And what we'd like to do is offer people prizes uh, in the form of gift certificates to your place so when we do get back they have an incentive to come and see you and again thinking business like you got to think about the amount of revenue they were losing at that point and i mean a lot of these bars have some fairly good sized footprints so you're you got to think about the property taxes that continued to come out the heat and the water and all that stuff that still had to go some of them were doing takeout, but it's still not anywhere near the level of revenue that they're used to in a lot of these months. So when they saw that as an opportunity to bring people back right after um, the lockouts, lockdowns ended, um, they jumped at it. So what we were able to do was give away the prizing to people wherever they were. So let's say somebody in Victoria won. Well, we would give them a prize for a bar in Victoria. Same thing with Nanaimo, same thing with Edmonton, Cold Lake, whatever the case may be. So uh, it comes down to having the right partnerships and being able to, again, I, I hate to harp on how, uh, how flexible I can be, <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's an incredibly important way to stay alive. And so that's what we were able to do. Uh, through solving these problems. So for Christmas last year, basically we had full on parties and it took a little bit of doing with these. We had comedians, we had our online games, we had an MC or host uh, and we had uh, music with requests if people wanted to dance in their living rooms as well. So, um, but it took a little bit to figure it out. Um, with the comedians, comedians in particular, they're artists. And so we all know how artists can be sometimes they're finicky and they like it a certain way. Comedians in particular, and I totally understand why, because I like it when I'm hosting an event or whatever the case may be, I like to have that um, feedback, instant feedback from the audience. And so again, learning Zoom and how the platform was working and how we could make it work best for people on both sides, um, we had to figure it out because we wanted 
I particularly wanted the comedians to be able to have that feedback. So they could, <laughs> talking to them, they hated it. Just coming on like this, presenting to people, saying their jokes, hearing nothing from people. Like, can you imagine that as a comedian? Like, okay, I'm in the hardest room I've ever been in because nobody's laughing at a damn thing I say. So they hated it hated it and so when i came when i came to the comedians and said guys i want to do this they were like oh no 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 but i said no but here's the situation we've got it set up so you guys will get that instant feedback you'll be able to hear the people laugh they'll still be able to heckle you if we end up with one of those people in a room and i'll tell you what it doesn't matter what room you're in you're going to end up with a heckler in it that's usually how it works so we were able to figure that out um what we ended up doing was we'd have multiple computers. So if you think about it, 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 and everybody knows how Zoom works now, you can see 25 people per screen on your, right? Me and Ashley are here right now kind of thing. But so uh, if there were 25 of us, you'd see 25 little squares. So what we do is based on the number of people that were coming to that party or number of devices that were gonna be at that party, let's say it's a hundred people, there are hundred devices. Now you need four host computers inside of that room, right? And each one of them will display one page of 25 people. And those 20, those four computer monitors are now, this is now gonna get technical for a little while, but we had to run the proper cables to four large monitors that were off camera. So right basically over to my left here and over to my right here, one above the other. And so the comedians could see each and every person because this one up here had the first 25, this one down here, the second 25, and then, right? So, and we didn't mute the people out because we wanted them to be able to do that. And we told them that I, 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 as their host said, okay, guys, here's the situation. This is, this is all new for all of us, but these co comedians do want to hear what you have to say. And they do want to hear you laugh. So if you really like something, feel free to bang your table, whatever, and uh, let them know that you do appreciate kind of what's going on. So what that ended up doing uh, is it actually gave the comedians a better show because they were getting that feedback and they were able to build on a lot, you know, you can build on a joke and continue that through the set kind of thing. And, and so they were able to do that knowing what people were enjoying. So it made it better for both the people that were there watching it and the people that were executing it. Again, it takes a whole lot of technology to make it happen and a whole lot of people, but it really, on top of that, you know, you need microphones, you need the proper setup because it, it can get as, as technical. I've got a, a friend who's got a full on studio built. And so it can be as technologically advanced as that, or it can be as simple as where I'm doing right now. You see the curtain behind me that was put up because I started hosting virtual parties. Instead of having my office in the background and you can actually see through the black curtain there, you can see the window and seeing kind of my family room. Uh, this is more of a, a formal background and it puts me in a, on stage, so to speak. So there's a lot of stuff that had to go into it, but we were able to make it happen. Even with our casino parties, so on a normal day, uh, we would take in our blackjack table, our roulette table, our craps tables, whatever the case may be, and give people fake money. And they would cash that in for chips that are worthless at every other casino except mine. And they're pretty worthless at mine as it is. But um, then they would gamble for a couple hours and they would get tickets at the end. So we had a company call and say, we want to do that. But obviously we can't be together. So can we do it virtually? I said, sure. Now here's the problem with that. Um, A, how do you get them their fake money? B, how do they place their bets? C, I mean, there's so many questions. So <laughs> we had to figure that one out. So we sat down and went, okay, so technologically, what do we need? You need a camera, at least one, on every table. On a roulette table, you need two cameras. You need one for the wheel and one for the layout. So people know where they can place their bets. On a blackjack table, one camera is typically good. But two is better because now you can focus, you can have one on the, the dealer's cards and one on the rest of the table as well. Um, so we put it together and basically we just kept it to roulette and blackjack, uh, simple, right? Keep it simple, stupid is another good uh, process for some of us to know. And because if we get 
it's hard enough with all this technology and learning that if you make it worse, it, it, so much could go wrong. So um, essentially on top of that, we'd have a computer alongside every single table and we put every table into a separate Zoom room so people could go and pick who they like. So it'd be room blackjack one, blackjack two or roulette kind of thing. So people could pick where they wanted to go play and they could jump back and forth if they wanted to. Now that created a whole other situation that I'll get to in just a second. But so what about betting? Okay, well, that's one of the reasons we needed the host with the dealer because now we can make sure that people are able to speak to the dealer. So we had speakers plugged in to that computer so we could hear what the people were saying. We had microphones for the dealers so they could talk directly to the people as well. Okay, it's time, John, to place your bet. Where do you wanna place it? John says, I wanna put it on the corner of red 18 kind of thing, the bottom left corner. And so he places, she, the dealer would place the bets. Uh, and then she'd make the spin and whoever won would win. We had to keep track of their money because this is what I was just saying. Now, let's say that person goes, okay, I'm leaving. I'm done playing roulette. I'm gonna go play blackjack. Okay, how do you get your money from? And we're in a warehouse. So one's over here, one's 100 feet that way. So we have to run. So basically, we had to keep track of the money on a little post it note. Okay, he had $63,000 and take that over. John is now playing blackjack. John has $63,000 kind of thing. And so that's basically how we made that work. So it takes a lot of technology for that. And so obviously, cameras everywhere, the mixers that come along with that, the cord, the cabling that has to happen, it is a whole lot of work. But uh, what ended up happening was this was a company, it's a, a local window company that um, has basically a, a party every single year for their dealers. And they had nothing, right? They couldn't get together. They couldn't cross. I mean, you could, but it was difficult to cross provincial boundaries because a lot of their people were in Saskatchewan, Manitoba kind of thing. So to travel that way was really difficult. So we solved that problem. And in that created a whole bunch of new little problems that we had to deal with, but they didn't see that. Again, it goes back to that thing I said earlier about why, why, why do you have to charge so much? Well, it's because of all the prep that you don't end up seeing. We are specifically there as professionals to make sure that your problem is solved and that your event goes as it should. So music poker is a little bit simpler and, and Ashley, you've seen this one too. And I mean, it works out really well online. Basically you just need a couple of computers. Uh, you need a guy like me that can talk a lot uh, and, and it costs a lot less. So there's, um, you gotta be able to be flexible with budgets too. And so if somebody has a few hundred bucks, we can help you. If somebody has a few thousand bucks, we can help you too. Um, you know, for everything, there's still lots of prep work. There's still lots of post event work and all that stuff that has to <laughs> go on with it. Um, so again, we're the first to arrive and the last to leave. And so it does become, particularly with the casinos, um, more expensive than a normal on-site casino would be simply because of the technology and the labor and the people that have to be there uh, alongside it. So the question now is, what now? Like, what what are we going to do for the future. Um, I, it's been said to me that there could be another lockdown coming, the actual fourth wave. And I hate that idea, <laughs> but it could very well happen. I mean, so we still need to be very, very nimble and ready to switch at a moment's notice. We are booking in-person events for the fall. And with that, obviously, the people, the common term is the vaccine passports. In Alberta, we call it the restriction exemption program. So if they're having an event, um, the venue is then responsible for checking everyone for their vaccination protocols and that kind of thing. So um, that's why we're able to even have some in-person events. Other than that, we're very much restricted still in terms of numbers and where it can happen. So on top of that, besides lockdowns, there's still, and this is to be expected um, right now with pandemics are not a new thing, but they're new for us. The last one really was a hundred years ago. So all we can do is look back historically and go, hey, how did that go before? And 
what we, if you look back at, at the Spanish flu, it took two years, two and a half years to get things to return to normal, uh, if you want to call it that. Um, and there, the world was very different at that point too, right? Flight wasn't really a thing yet. Our, our world got a lot uh, smaller and easier uh, to access uh, in then too, which is why the, the virus spread so quickly. So um, there's still people out there that are very fearful of travel or of getting together in a large room. And I mean, a perfect example, it's not even a fearful thing. It's just, uh, we did a, a, a quick casino the other day and uh, one of my dealers had a close contact, right? So stuff like this can come up last second. So you've really got to be ready for any type of scenario. Uh, weddings are a perfect uh, setup with a wedding. And we did one a few weeks ago. This is where the pivoting comes in. Um, the wedding was all of including, no, I'm not going to include us. Uh, the bride and groom and guests totaled 12 people. And it was outside in a sunflower field. So what do we do as a company to be able to involve, they're both Ukrainians from Manitoba. So what do we do to involve the 7,000 people that would have been at that wedding anyway? Um, this one, we were ready to broadcast, but simply because of where it was, uh, it wasn't possible. There wasn't a fast enough internet connection. So all we did was we took out a videographer and recorded off of my music console and recorded off. And so we had a microphone for their, uh, their officiant and everybody could hear everything that was said. And they could hear the songs that these people had chosen for their walk down the aisle and that sort of thing. And it really, and at the end of it, basically I handed them two SD cards and said, here's your video, here's your audio. Anybody can, and I would have done it for them too, but they just didn't, you know, they figured they could do the editing and that kind of stuff. Great, not a problem, I'm happy. Um, so here's your two cards and now you can show your entire family and all your friends exactly how your wedding went. And they loved it, they were blown away. So you can do it in person for small, you can do it online, which like I said, we can do as well. That's where it comes to live camera as opposed to recording it. You plug into a computer, again, as long as there's a strong enough internet connection, otherwise there's going to be hesitations and delays. We don't, we've all experienced it, right? Or you can do a hybrid. So if you have 150 people invited, and 10 of them get COVID the week before the wedding's supposed to happen and they can't come, well, now you can add a hybrid element to that as well. We can still do the in-person stuff, but we add some cameras, we add Zoom, and now all of a sudden everybody can come to the ceremony again um, and they don't have to wear pants, going back to that. But uh, we can do that for meetings as well. Again, going back to that, that Tony Robbins, in person is what he is fantastic at, but we could do it online if we needed. And now all you've got is a crew of two or three people or four people, or in his case, 15 to 50 people in one place making it happen. Um, and I've always thought that we could, do, we could do fun stuff with Syndicate for this as well. If we have two or three people in one room and we broadcast it out to everybody, I think that would be fantastic. Uh, and that's where the hybrid comes in. So if people are comfortable with coming to a meeting or coming to a convention, whatever, they can come. If they would prefer to attend online, they can come online because we can do both and involve everybody as opposed to just you know what, okay, no, they're online, we don't have to worry about them. But no, again, going back to what the comedians did, if we can involve people that way in terms of the host uh, or the speaker at a convention, now those people are involved as well and they can hear that feedback and, and kind of what they like and the, the applause. So again, it makes it a much better experience for both the presenter and the person who was uh, attending and paying money typically to attend these events and, and learn some things. So that's conferences, that's meetings, that's weddings. We can do in person, online, hybrid, make it happen. Uh, some add-ons that we've done as well, uh, and we did this for a couple of uh, companies last year. Uh, and this comes down to creating and formulating the right partnerships with the right people as well. Um, catering, 
we can get hot food to people, even multiple households. We did a party for 150 people and had them catered with turkey dinner, stuffing, everything that came along with it, uh, including cheesecake at the end. So fantastic. Um, so we're still allowed. And, and one of the greatest things we can do as human beings is break bread together and, and sit down and have a meal together because then you, your walls come down a little bit and you're able to have that, uh, have that discussion with people. So uh, we can do that as well. We can add that on. We can do, and Ashley, you experienced this, cooking parties. We created uh, the Fairmont and a lot of us screwed it up, but <laughs> we created the Fairmont Hotel's uh, uh, cheese fondue, which if you go there, it's much better. But uh, it, the fondue was good. And then the drink that came along with it um, was excellent. <laughs> uh, a few people had a couple too many, but that's, so you can have a drink mixing party. You can have a cooking party. I mean, we couldn't get Gordon Ramsay, but there are chefs out there that are happy to take part in this stuff as well. And then everybody gets to take part. Everybody gets to learn something. What we all want to do is learn something new every day. So if we can teach them how to cook a dish that they might not normally cook and enjoy, that's fantastic. Um, mixing drinks as well. I know lots of bartenders, we can do a mixology kind of thing and test all kinds of different drinks. We want them to be fruity, we want it sour, whatever. We can make it happen. And again, everybody can take part. Now, that drink mixing can get a little bit dicey after a few of them because people start to enjoy themselves a lot. But that really, if you're thinking about it, if we go back to those problems that we're trying to solve, that's kind of the point. We want people to have fun. We want people to enjoy themselves. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, they see that the companies that they're working for appreciate what they do and uh, appreciate what they've gone through over the last little while. On top of that, we can DJ, we can have the music, we can do the music poker. Uh, I've also facilitated an online, and this was fun, really fun, an online charades tournament. So charades championship basically is what it was. I created a bracket and we, uh, we got all the team names and there were four or five people per team. Uh, so I created this bracket. They did a, I had all the rules laid out and actually I've got some of the charades right here. So this activity was driving a taxi, right? So they had to act that out. And that's where the Zoom brilliance with video and audio is fantastic because they can, because they have to shut up anyway and everybody can yell and, and, and guess what they're acting out. It was so much fun. They had such a great time and you can give away prizes just like you would at a Christmas party, things like that too. So basically to wrap it up, it's really become a whole part of, of the company is just being able to switch gears and help people out no matter what situation they're in. Uh, if they're not uh, vaccinated, well, we can get you online. If they're not taking part in the res res restriction exemptions program, we can get you online. If you guys are ready to go and, and everybody's done what they need to do, uh, we can all get together. Let's do that then, right? So we can help it out and just ready to be flexible with everybody for the next, hopefully six months and it'll be over. <laughs> and that's it. That's my Ted talk for today. <laughs> Thanks Darcy. I mean, it's, it's so interesting to hear where events were to where they are now and how much our world has changed. I mean, you mentioned SARS and I'm thinking in my head, well, you know, as you said, it spread a lot faster this time because of the travel and because of the nature of our world. And then it also allowed us to, adapt uh, much more because of now the online world. And so I think, you know, there's so many variables at play, but definitely your industry amongst others that are related to yours was the hardest hit. Um, and so I've always been impressed by your ability to think creatively and kind of think that charades thing you brought up. I'm like, that would be so much fun. I could picture myself screaming at the camera, right? <laughs> Sitting in my house going, who's watching me other than those people on the camera? <laughs> uh, but, you know, you also mentioned something about you know, restaurants and how gift cards were so um, welcome to be purchased because then it guaranteed revenue at that point to pay the daily bills and then brought people into the restaurant once things were opened up and when and if they were comfortable to do so. And, you know, there was a local pub here that did, I think it was an NFL kind of competition where every night they gave away something and then they gave you a chance to win, you know, a trip to the Super Bowl or whatever it was. And, um, somebody I know actually won the week prize and got a ticket to this, you know, final finale grand prize and the pub just canceled it. Uh -huh. They didn't, they didn't 
pivot or adapt and say, here, we'll give everybody that was a finalist a gift card to come in. They just said, oh, because of COVID, we're not even doing the trip. And, you know, I thought that was a total miss because what's a $50 gift card or something per person that is definitely going to generate more than $50 revenue, right? And bring people in and get people pumped again to be back in person. So, you know, things like that and thinking outside the box, thinking long term of how might this help me go forward, I think is really important. Um, and then obviously my world is HR um, as an executive of syndicate, you know, I I've talked about HR quite a bit in the group and been really involved with you on a number of things, because as you said, HR so closely relates to events and culture and engagement within organizations that you and I've been able to partner on a lot of unique things um, to get people together. And a lot of times I hear the zoom fatigue or the, I don't want to get together with my coworkers at night because I see them virtually all day and I don't want to be on the computer. Well, I can speak from experience, Tarsi's holiday party last year where we did the cooking and we did the music poker and even the charades. I don't think I would liken that as an individual myself to Zoom fatigue and a Zoom meeting. I think it's totally different and it engages you in a different way and pulls on different brain cells. And so I encourage organizations, leaders, everybody that's listening to this now and in the future to think creatively and call Tarsi and figure out here, this is the restrictions we have. What can I do? And here's my budget. And then you can, you know, use your great brain and think of something that's great. Um, so I just, I thank you for bringing those really unique things to the forefront over the last 18 months, because those that have been a part of your events and or other things that you've offered, I think it's just kind of given us a renewed sense of fun um, that I think was really tough. So thanks for what you do. It was. And, and just to speak to the Zoom fatigue really quickly, yeah, that yeah. was something that we were worried about in a big, big way um, because people were sitting on Zoom all day. So what I encourage people to do, and you might remember this, is don't sit at a laptop like you and I are doing right now. Plug your laptop into your TV. It's a simple HDMI cord, bang, bang. Sit back, enjoy the show, right? It becomes now something that you're watching on a bigger screen and you're not hunched over uh that kind of thing so you can relax and put your feet up and whatever the case may be so that was a big part of every email we sent out with with the company parties and that and the virtual parties was just to make sure that guys you don't have to some did still and that's fine i i mean if you're comfortable there stay there i don't I mean, I'm happy. I just want people to be happy. That's my whole goal at the end is to make people happy, make them enjoy themselves for a little while. So um, yeah, that was, that was a big thing was, Hey, this is an option for you guys. And if you need help, call me, I'll help you kind of thing. So I gave that option as well. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And there's lots of other, other opportunities too to engage people and have fun. And I know Yulia is on the call right now um, with Epic Experiences and she's got a lot of other things as a syndicate member that she offers that are unique and experiences once it's safe to do so. And so there's lots of things out there that anybody from the general public can, can lean into or take advantage of or think creatively on um, should you, know, you have a need and should you want to get people together. So I look forward to what you're going to offer for the upcoming holiday season with regards to virtual parties and or in-person parties. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you for uh, being with us today, Tarsi. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Ashley. And thanks, Syndicate, for inviting me. Of course. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today in person and or if you're doing this in the future on Syndicate Talks. I've been your host, Ashley McCarney, and I hope you found this insightful, educational and informative and gives you a new lease on what um, events and entertainment can be in the near future. So uh, thanks again, Tarsi, for sharing all of that with us and make sure that you check out Syndicate Talks season one and season two and all of the upcoming seasons on our YouTube channel. And we will see you next time, everybody, for a Syndicate Talks. Have a great day. See you later.